Sometimes we do a big mistake. That is, we are measuring how advanced technology we are used by considering the tools we use. That is wrong. For example, just because of you use Spring Boot doesn't mean you are doing a microservices. Just because of you hosted on AWS doesn't mean you are doing a cloud native application. Just because of you use Kafka doesn't mean you are doing event driven design. Just because of your Jenkins doesn't mean that you are doing a proper CI, OCD, OCI, CD. So likewise, just because of we use that tool doesn't mean we are doing it, right? When I go through most of uh, design reviews, when, when, when I was hired to do a design reviews and architecture reviews, when I go through with those architects, most of the time they are on the latest framework, latest tool, latest technologies. But still design is old fashioned design. That is wrong. Today we are going to learn one. Let's do one at a time. Today we are going to discuss how we can use latest database technologies and frameworks out there to distribute and decouple our systems and make sure the systems are scalable and also reliable. Before you do that, I need you to do one more thing. That is, if you are not subscribed yet, you need to subscribe now because day by day you are getting good videos. And also, if you know someone interesting on these type of videos, please share this video, maybe in LinkedIn, maybe in your social media, somewhere, and make sure more people see these videos. So in that case, that would be a real encouragement for me to do more and more topics and discuss more and more real world scenarios. Let's get some of the problem we are going through when we are in a post uh, production implementation. Most of the time users complain, our system is time time slow. Maybe it's slow in the morning, maybe it's slow in the evening, maybe it's slow when the burst traffic comes. And also user says, when the report runs, my system is slow. When they run the reports, I cannot do transactions. And also sometimes users complain, my system is slow when there are some bad jobs. Maybe we have some bad job run every hour, maybe uh, every two hours, doesn't matter. Users complain, when there are bad job configured, my process can, I cannot work in the system because it's slow. Also sometimes you have implemented audit trials. These audit trials are not reliable because sometimes, because audit trial must be reliable because in case you go for some legal actions, your audit trail is, will be the one of the evident to your legal work. So therefore, audit trail must be reliable. So most of the time we have seen audit trails are not reliable. Sometimes if the transaction is rolled back, the audit trail is still think the transaction happened. Or maybe the transaction deleted, the record deleted, but the, we missed the audit trail. All right? So it's dangerous to lose in the audit trail because that is the way it tells what you what you have done, but if it is having a so wrong record, then uh, uh, you can get count on that to uh, tell what user has done. And also sometimes we want to have an event driven design, but sometimes application wide events may be not reliable. For example, you save a customer order, you save the sales invoice, you save the purchase order, then you are emitting an event. All right? But what if you save the order, but the emitting event part is failed? When you're trying to emit the event, uh, your system crash, your service crash, your port crash. So now you have a saved sales invoice, but you don't have the event, right? So that may be not reliable also. So those are the pain points we are going through and those are the things can hit on the reliability of our system. So we are going to discuss the architecture based on the CDC, change data capture solution. So then we can solve most of our problem we discussed. This is how it works. Almost every database support this change data capture event. So that means when you configured it, when something happened on the particular table, if you configure the CDC to that table, it emit an event. It tells you what has happened. For example, if you insert record, it tells record inserted, it emit an event. If you update a record, it emit event. If you delete the record, it emit events. So what you're going to do is we are going to capture these events and then process those events. Okay. So then what we can do with those things? For example, we can capture these events from one database, from your main database, and you can uh, process those events on the other database, which is a replica database. In that case, you can you have an identical database from master database to your replica database, and then you can offload your report, your batch jobs, your frequent reading events to that particular database. In that case, when someone run reports, when someone run batch jobs, when someone run 
the uh, main major query is your main database is not impacted then your application application can gain a lot of performance because you will not experience some read logs or write logs otherwise you experience when you're running the reports on this particular main server most important part of implementing a CDC is you can sync different type of databases. Let's say your reports run on MS SQL, like a, a SQL reporting services, and then you got your system run on a Postgres or a MySQL or a uh, Oracle, right? So then you can't use directly this MySQL uh, MS SQL reports on this one. So now you what you can do is you can use CDC event, the Oracle or a MySQL database emit event and those event event produce in the MS SQL database or vice versa. So you may have a, a MS SQL database, but all your other systems are run on a Postgres or a MySQL database. Now you can emit the event from the MS SQL database and you can sync those to different maybe Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, any type of databases or even for NoSQL database, MongoDB. Right, and then now you your system work with one database, and then it produce uh, other databases through CDG events. So it's, it's inter database conversion is work seamlessly. Not only that, so you can have an audit trail based on that. Why? Because now when every table data change, it emit an event. So then you can capture that event. You can see this user update this record from this value to this value. You have a detailed audit trail. Right, this is very important detail audit trail. It is it is very reliable because you capture the event only if it is effect on the database. Let's say some user try to delete the record, so you emit the audit trial event, but your actual delete is failed. Then the is a wrong audit trial event. Let's say other way around. You delete first and then issue the audit trial event. So you delete the record, but audit trial event emitting is failed. Then you deleted the record, but the audit trial event is missing. But in this case, we are capturing the event in the database level, so it is made sure, it made sure, it guaranteed the your event is emitted only and only if the data is modified on the database. In a while, we are going to show how to do it, but uh, let's, let's discuss these things first. And also not only that, you can sync this data, your database into other sources. For example, let's say you are integrating with the third party system or some different system, which is not a database. They need the files, data files, maybe data as XML files, maybe data as a JSON files, or maybe data as a parquet file or some, some sort of a file. Then you can emit the event, capture the event and like write a file to S3 buckets or a, uh, whatever the storage you want, maybe the NAS or maybe some your local storage or maybe some S3 bucket, you can do it. But now database represented as a file on a different solution. So you can use this as an archival as well. Why? Now you, every single record you are creating, you are sending to maybe a data lake or maybe uh, some other storage and then you can safely delete these records from your main database. Why? Because you are, uh, your data available on the data lake or archival state storage but when you do this you need to make sure it's not simple as i said because when you write the reports you need to make sure when the report absent from the main database it's reading data from the other database as well because otherwise you may need to have a two reports one for the live system and one for the archive system it's it's a wrong design so you need to consider those as aspect as well and main thing I like is then you can build something like a separation of concern. If you're familiar with the CQRS design pattern, command queries, responsibility segregation design pattern. So you really can build very reliable event based uh, reading and writing when you have a two different databases. For example, CQRS means you are writing to one database and you are reading from other database, right? So now you need to sync this data as, as like minimum time is possible within the milliseconds probably. So what my experience is you can sync one database to other database within a matter of seconds like probably two to three seconds maximum. So it's, it's very fast than you think. So there are various benefits like that. So let's see how we can do something like this. Okay. So I'm not going to implement this practically now, but if you really want me to in, uh, implement something like this, let me know. And if like many people asking, uh, I'm going to implement that. And so you can see, so this is your source database, right? So this is your source database. Let's assume, right? So this can be same uh, database, but let's assume this is MySQL database, right? 
So now what we do is we enable CDC. Right? CDC enabled. Right? We enable CDC. Now when the CDC enabled, what happens is it emit events. So now you have a Kafka. Right? So you have Kafka here. Okay. And what we do is we use a something uh, like you can use there are multiple tools available for this one. I'm using a Debezier. Okay, I'm using Debezier. What the Debezier source connectors does is it read the CDC event, right? It read the CDC event and it convert and it publish to Kafka, right? So this can be, this event can go as a, like a uh, compressed one because if you have a large record and if you want to compress those, Avro is a really nice way to do it because it's a schema driven. So when you are table column, when you added columns or when you change data type or something like that, then you can publish a new schema version. So then uh, first previous version can refer with the previous schema and the new version may be refer with the new schema. You can do various things with it. So if you don't want that, you can export as a JSON, it doesn't matter. So now what you can do is you use something like a JDBC connectors, right? I'm not like specific these uh, type of these shapes, JDBC connector. What this JDBC connector does is it take these records and it sync to other database. Let's say this is MSSQL database, right? So keep in mind, this database can be same MSSQL, MSSQL, MySQL, MySQL. Doesn't matter. I'm just say uh, taking this as a different example, so then you can like you can see more benefits, right? So now it's even. So now what you can do is see that we opening more and more uh, options here. Now you are deploying an audit trial service. Right, audit service. So now what it does is it listening to all these events, right? And it produces audit trials. Right? Maybe uh, those are go to different database, or maybe uh, those are goes as a files, right? Audit records. So now this is one this is the other option, right? So also what you can do is you can have your service events. So for example, if you're implementing something like a saga, what we discussed in one of our previous video. So now what you can do is you can have a, like a choreography or some sort of whatever the saga pattern you are using. So let's say uh, this is we are listening for the invoice table. When the invoice is created, right? So you listen to this and then this is dispatch service. Right, so dispatch service is processing it. So now, when the dispatch is processed, or the say when the dispatch table gate pass service go and create a gate passes. Now the importance is you only acting when this really happen, right? If you don't do this like before this, this is not application driven. If the real data modified on database, only this work, right? So that is that's the benefit of this. So, I mean, uh, you can you can capture um, insert record separately, update record separately, delete record separately. If it's an update, it shows you before and after versions. If it's a delete, it shows you like before version, but there is no after version. If there's insert, there is no before version, there's after version. You also always can do the comparison. Let's say, for example, order cancellation, right? So if you're listening to the order table, and then you can see when the order status change from this to this. If the order status change from 20 to 30, we need to do this. If the order status change from 30 to 40, we need to do this. It's a really, it's really help on something like a saga pattern. Why this is important, let's say something like this. Okay, so see this one. So you emit the event, but the moment you emit the event, this dispatch service is offline. This is offline now. This is not working, right? But it's fine. It's okay. So now you uh, like, Pay like you have a you issues like a 10 sales invoices, but none of dispatch why dispatch service is down, right? But 
if you are calling as endpoint of the dispatch service let's say let's say you assume you from sales invoice service you are talking to dispatch service http endpoint now the problem is in the service is down you need to implement complicated retry mechanism on the invoice service side right every time every 5 minute every 10 minute or a cron job it has to try all the failed transaction now what you do is you publish this message here right you capture it from the table itself now those are waiting the moment the service come back online it will consume these services and process the dispatching orders right i'm not saying in any manner you have to totally rely on these uh, table events what i'm saying you can do right but none of these creating stress on your source database that's the most important part this very decouple right so your source database is stay cool right only one debigm connector is reading it debigm can reading and publishing the event everyone is attached to those events not to the database there is no load on the database so that is the most important part so now you can think of unlimited possibilities of this so if you have any question anything you can comment and then i'll try to reply if it is something deserve a long explanation i will explain like uh, in a different video but if it is a short one i'll reply in the comment i hope you get the point rather than you just implementing a source database and the read replica or a passive database passive database mean that this database come online only if the main database goes offline right so rather you implementing a, a active passive mode of cluster you can have this type of read replica and you can you can open endless possibilities like you can send this data to files for archives for a backups for a dr sites you can do anything with this this video like i hope this help you and this video uh, open your eyes to do something different in your project if you are if you are working on a migration work on a project if you are planning to migrate your project or if you are trying to solve this slowness problem of your project go ahead and propose this solution and you can find enough tutorials online how to do this type of thing but if you need if you think i do i need to show this case in myself as a demo practical demo let me know i'll take some time and i'll set up and i'll show you and it it will really like it takes some time because i need to set up a kafka cluster and debigms and everything but i'll do it for you if you really need it so then talk to you soon in the next video until then stay safe